All right, this is an informational video on how I convert uh, cooktops, barbecues, you know, whatever it is, from propane to natural gas or natural gas to propane. There's a couple things that have to be changed. I'm not worried about those items. What I'm, what I'm going to be focusing on in this video is the actual orifices, and orifices can, you know, be a number of different shapes. These are hooded orifices as you can see here, okay? But there's a number of different styles of orifices that can fit into these here. Uh, the orifices, you know, they fit on the burner tube. I removed this here just so you, it's easy to show. This is where the orifice here, this has to be taken off and a new one has to be put on. Once the orifices fit up in here, you know, this little orifice will actually, see there's a turned down portion of this shank, it will actually fit up into a burner tube and it'll it'll shoot the gas into the burner tube and then the burner tube will ignite okay so real basic stuff okay uh, you need a handful of tools to do this uh, now when I do custom orifices I do them on a lathe because I need that hole to be sent you know centered exactly in the middle okay these ones have starter holes these are number 72 starter holes here they're not designed to be used they're designed to be pilot holes so that when you put a drill in there you know you're you're gonna have something to start with so it's it's centered okay um, I use pin vices to hold small drill bits okay I have an index of drill bits okay these are numbered drill bits okay so this is an American standard here numbered drill bits starting at number 60 going all the way up to number one okay if you notice the bigger the number the larger the drill okay they're also they also have decimal equivalents under here so the size that I have to go on this one here is going to be a number 57 so that's actually going to take me to a an 043 hole so that's 0.043 thousandths of an inch, okay, 43 thousandths, okay, uh, pretty small hole, okay. Now you'll see some numbers out there on, let's say, uh, foreign made barbecues. Those numbers are not pertinent to American made barbecues. They'll usually be high numbers also. They'll usually be like 109 or, or somewhere in that range, okay. That's pretty much how you know that they are not American barbecues. American standard, you know, requires American drill bits. Some of the holes that you'll see will be fractional, but very, very, very rarely. If you see a fractional number being thrown at you for what the size of, you know, your final bore size has to be, I'd be very hesitant about that. I would seek another source to make sure that I have the right uh, size there. And there are tables available out there. Uh, you know, the formula is like a foot long for that thing. So, you know, I happen to be uh, sort of in the trade. So I know the numbers that need to be used per whatever the given BTU is versus the, the gas pressure that's being fed into this thing. I do these for my customers and I supply these orifices for my customer. And that's a courtesy that I do uh, for a fee to customers is to pour these to size. Again, a number 72 extremely small orifice starter hole size, okay? Once I stamp, or once I drill the orifices to the right size, okay, I stamp a number on the orifice, usually on the shoulder right here, okay, to show what size that orifice is. Now these orifices have a number on them, it says 72. That's telling me that that's what size this pilot hole is right here, okay? But it's not the final size of what this orifice actually needs to be to do the job. So, final bore is going to be a number 57. And I mark my bags. I put them in separate bags so the customers know. There's supposed to be six of these at number 57, and they go for the standard burners, okay? And I do have a central burner on the unit that I'm working on, so that one's already been bored, okay? So basically, take one of these guys. I, I start at an undersize and I work my way up to the final size, which is going to be a number 56. On this orifice, I'm going to do this three times. I'm going to start with a number 60, then I'm going to go, uh, I'm sorry, final orifice size number 57. That's what the final hole size is going to be. I start with a number 60, I'm going to go to a number 58, and then I'm going to do a final bore size to 57 just to make sure that that hole is true. If I go straight to 57 and I slant drill it, 
it's going to be wrong and the hole is going to be distorted and it's not going to be exactly the spec. Ideally, I do these on a lathe. I have a lathe back here that I turn out some orifices with that are hard to find. So I do that because they don't have starter holes and I want to make sure that that hole is centered in the exact center of the orifice. Otherwise, the orifice is no good. So I'm going to start with number 60. Okay, as you can see, a number 60 is an extremely small drill bit. They even have, most units take even smaller drills than that, and that's what I have this index for here. These are for the smaller ones, okay, and they have, you know, they'll start at number, number 61 and work their way all the way down to a number 80, which is extremely small. It's almost microscopic. I've even done holes smaller than that because some of these units have two orifices per burner. So that means they have a really super low simmer burner and they require an extremely small hole, which is extremely precise. And they're a real pain in the ass to do because you're dealing with a super small drill bit. Okay? So anyway, this one, getting back to the subject at hand, this one here. Okay, so I put this in my pin vise. Okay, feeds right up to the top here. You know, just twist down and I, it's going to be done by hand. So, you know, you got this, you got your little starter hole here. I go in from the bottom because they're chamfered at the top here, okay? And I just kind of slowly but surely start to bore the orifice. And I don't put a lot of pressure on there because I really don't want to do it in a hurry and I don't want to take any risk that that hole is going to be distorted. So I just kind of go up through here, okay? This takes a while because uh, you know you're doing this by hand here. Now these are brass, so they are fairly soft, but still, you know, doing this by hand is not like doing it with a with a uh, a drill. And the drill is just going to be too fast. It's going to it's going to distort the hole from the heat of it being so fast moving through that metal like that. You can hear it. Okay, it just broke through. Okay. So, I broke through with my first one, that's a number 60 bit, okay. I'm going to go to the next one. The next one's going to be one size smaller than what I have to do. So I'm going to a number 57. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to a number 58. Oops. I just did a number 60, so as you can see, the number's on the end here, okay, 60, right. I'm going to go all the way to a 58 right now. Okay, so I'm going to go two over, and I'm going to do that hole at a number 58, and the final hole is going to be done at a number 57, which is the final size that it needs to be. Okay, twist that right in there. There it is again. Let's run it through. It doesn't really take that much. Okay. I said there are mere thousandths of an inch difference between these different drill sizes. So that's my number 58. The final size for that orifice is going to be a number 57. So let me put this in here if I can find the hole correctly. There it is. Okay, and I always count, you know, so uh, 58, 59, 60. Okay, I just make sure that I got the right one because these are pretty small on there. You're probably not as blind as I am, but whatever. Okay, check this guy up in here. Final drill size, very lightly. Okay. Twist it through, and there we go. Now we're at a final size of number 57. Okay. Now, I've just drilled this, okay? That means that there's a little bit of dust in there. Okay. So, compressed air. I go through, and then I go through. That way I know that there's no air in there. I'm very methodical about the way I do these, okay? So that is bored to a number 57 size. I know that that size is good. I know that that hole is round by the way that I did it, okay? And I've used the various tools. The next thing that I do is I stamp 
the edge of this, and I'm not going to show you stamping it because I'm sure you know how to do that, okay? I stamp it with a number 57 right on the end here, and I make sure that I put an X across the number 72 so that they understand that it's actually a number 57. When you stamp on the brass, you need to just stamp just enough so that it puts an imprint in the metal. If you stamp it too hard, you're going to knock this hole, you know, these threads out of round. And that's going to be a bad thing. So just make sure you're dealing with brass here that you're stamping it like it needs to be stamped. And that's going to be the final step. So thanks for watching my video. I hope you learned a little bit here. This is an informational video. It's not designed to be instructions. It's not designed to replace any manufacturer information out there. It's just an information so that an informational video so that you'll know what has to happen with these orifices when you replace, you know, when you're converting from gas to propane. Thanks again for watching.